Walker, and we're kicking things off on Inferno, and I wouldn't want it any other way than a mid aggression coming right out of Gambit. Straight down mid, Nafani's looking for something, and we've got a three are stuck between a rock and a hard place. There's flames now up in them either. Straight through the smoke, and now be an aggressive start to this pistol round, but it's not over yet. Yuri's in a one versus four. Molotov to try and create some space, and maybe he can isolate some fights as he stands behind him. He can see the double peak. Axile to get that last kill. Gambit, take the pistol. Nice start for them on the CT side. But I'm sure that Fury will have some tricks up their sleeve as they move into this next round. And the question is, do they want to get that pressure on straight away? Are we going to see a force buy? Or are they going to just save, keep things chill for now? Of course not, James. Of course not. We're going to get the MAC-10 coming out straight away on k Serato. They mean business in this round here, Fury. They have something up their sleeves indeed. And we'll have to see exactly how it pans out. I knew that we weren't going to get Nuke in this series. But um, I think that is a great example on the T side of just how aggressive and merciless Furia can be on their T side. How scary every round can be. They'll always be threatening to go for a fast push. Oh, and it's really hard to hold your utility against Furia. James, they're going to try to flash through this, I think. They're going to try to push up this banana, but it's, there's a deep control with Nafani right there. They don't necessarily know if there's a force buy here. Gambit, so this could be a surprise of resmoke. And they're readying up the flash, but Art, he's going to pull off of the flash there. You can see Gambit, they're playing very, very careful with respect to top mid, for example. They're trying to avoid getting overrun by pistols, having rifles picked up. They're playing as much range as they can. Obviously, Banana is very, very important. Just a threat in going to either side, so you can see that Furia want to take it away. And Gambit going to stand and fight, but Shiro in the library, everybody playing range on that A-bomb site. Help will not be on the way quickly. There it is, the flashes, but Nafani, he's got, whoa! K Serato, how has he won that one? That's a huge opening there for Furia. They've burned a lot of the clock, waiting those smokes out, but they have plenty of time to get themselves into that B site. But it is fortified still. We've got Hobbit up there with an MP9. Furia, 30 seconds left, looking for the split. This is going to be a tough one, but they still have options going into this B site. 30 seconds on the clock, and there's a, hold on a second, we've got a two-man flank, and Inter has got no idea, outmaneuvered by Furia, and now we've got huge problems for Gambit, they do, however, have two players on the bomb site, and time is on their side. But there are dangerous weapons in the hands of Furia as well, but they need to close this distance, these MP9s need to get a little closer, because he's Shiro trying to play max distance, gets his bell rung now. Case Rato's in the red as well, bomb plant pressure, they need to die before the clock runs out at the very least, four seconds, have they got time? It's got to be too late, surely! Oh. Axel had no idea. He could have just stopped there and two players would die after the clock. It will go the way of Gambit, but only one player survives. Oh, that is quite difficult. I think we had someone dying after time there, possibly. I think, yeah, Yuri died after time, so not going to have any money at all, really. So they're actually, I think they might be looking to force up again. Furia, unrelenting like aggression. We're going to have two AK-47s coming through from them. They're keeping Gambit's economy quite limited. But Gambit, they have the three MP9s, and we have three players without helmets. So those MP9s are going to be extremely potent in this round. Furia. They're actually starting off with the slow pace yet again. So the opening of this round it looks very similar to the previous one. I think if Furia plant the bomb in that round as well, I wouldn't be surprised if they had gone for the force by Only one player surviving meets. Opportunity knocks for Furia. However, Gambit have got a pretty reasonable buy. They're pretty good with grenades, trying to hold on to these smokes for as long as they can. A minute 20 is going to be a very long time to try and hold versus Furia. They're trying to get them to go to A, James. They've re-smoked Banana, and they have a four-player set up on this A site. They're playing retake for B, but they are making Furia go to top mid. That's exactly what they want. Gambit are so set up for this. But Tech 9 as well. Deagles on this occasion can be a problem. Shiro blind, lucky to escape actually. They have to consider hunting him very, very quickly indeed. But Nafri's here for the angles. That really compromises how Furia can push in this long position now. Vinny thinking about it. And Shiro just creeping. He's got half health or less than that. Doesn't want to give up the rifle, so he's got to fall back. But again, two players on the site. Crossfire with the pit player, Exile. 41 seconds, but look at the position Furia have. They're just chilling, just edging forward. Down he goes, and now we've got real problems for Gambit. Yeah, two nice openings. Napani still at the back of the site, though, with the MP9 will go down as well. 30 seconds is plenty of time to get that site locked down. There we have the plant. The afterplant position is looking good. And Gambit, they want nothing to do with this one. And that's, that is so interesting right now. We have it's, This is so tense. Gambit is playing very passive because they know of Furious tendencies to play very aggressively. So they're just trying to shut down that banana position and then just wait passively for the response. And 
furious, so methodical. They, even though they go into the stack, because they're so methodical in their approach, they're still, they, they make this look very good despite not having much in the way of a buy. So Furia looking very impressive here. Very impressive, considering they had two players playing that long position. But again, with the exchange, they had the skirmish. Shira had to fall back to try and avoid the rifle getting into their hands. Furia able to surround the bomb site and look like they're in a much better position, even with three players remaining on that A area. So that looked very troublesome for Gambit indeed. A slow creeping death at the hands of Furia, who win their force by now. And they've got a big opportunity ahead of them. Of course, the loss bonus will be in the bin for Gambit. They will force by up. Got a French gun for Exile. Shiro still with the silence M4. MP9 for Hobbit and some five sevens for Inters and Nafani. But the utility is slightly lower. They have prioritized these smoke grenades, of course, the first one of which goes through. But Furia are going to charge straight through. Have they got the numbers to trade, though? That is the question. Hobbit trying to hold things down here. And I think they may have survived that first test. Yeah, three players here. Is it a case, though, that Fury are willing to give up on this? There'll be the boost over the half on Case of is going to spot that they're falling back of top mid. And that's interesting. That allows Fury to take this position away. Will Gambit think about trying to retake this? It doesn't really look like they have the ability to do so. Fury, top banana control, but the bomb is still in spawn at the moment, James. So we can see that that means that Fury will have to slow things down. Got that map control. And really, at this point, Gambit, they've got five players left alive, so they're probably not going to make any info plays. They're likely just going to gamble stack here on this B site. Leave the two players in that A site and just wait to see how Furia handles this situation. Furia have got three Molotovs for an execute. Now, they could use one or two to try and squeeze some more grenades out of Gambit. But if they go for a full execute with three Molotovs, I'd expect one new box, which is already being lined up, maybe one towards the dark spot as well. And if they, if they have smokes for... Well, there's the only smoke they have actually, but it's going to be hard for the CTs to hold on the site if these mollies go in the right places. There is a counter molly which may slow things down, but there's flashes here as well. One more to go deployed now as the push comes through. Top with 10 HP won't last very long. Strikes a wrap and uh, so far so good. Nafani and Hobbit coming through. But now things start to change to get wiped out of the site. A fast plant of 18 seconds left, which is going to be really handy for them as well. Yeah, that's a great opening again. Fury going into the stack. It doesn't matter, Fury. Takes down Nafani, leaving two players left here for Gambit on the retake. They have very little to work with. I believe a 5-7 on Inters and Axel working the FAMAS. There's a two versus two though, but Fury will be better able to hold these positions together on the site. No utility to split them up. As Gambit start to press forwards, they start to try to get the info. Where are both of these players? Both at the back corner, they know now, but it's too late. Inters, one versus two, 5-7 in hand. Does not like the look of that one. Will have to fall back. And Furia, they're going into the stack, James. Both rounds, arguably lesser equipped, and they're still coming out on top. That's an amazing sign if you're Furia. Yeah, they, they kept enough to execute, but I think the bigger story is that they have come prepared for this major. I've seen their pickums, and as far as they're concerned, of course, Furia are going all the way. And as one of the big underdogs in this bracket, I think it's going to be very exciting to see if they can get further, especially against a team with the prowess of Gambit, but they've made it very, very hard for Gambit. Look how dry this eco is. Absolutely parched on the Gambit side. And this CT side, so far, again, we're only f uh, five rounds in. We've seen four rounds so far, but it's looking very, very difficult indeed for Gambit, as it doesn't look like Furia have left anything to chance with how they've approached these rounds, how they've outpositioned them, how they've used their utility, they've held on to it. Again, taking Banana early, even though it cost them a man, they had the ability to execute and make it very hard to survive on the site. Yeah, we have just Gambit playing the USB stack on the A site. And one of the interesting things to note here about what Furia are doing is in every round so far on their T side, they have played the entire clock out. They are playing extremely passive, which forces Gambit in the buy rounds to want to hold on to their utility because they don't want to burn it early on because it means less early on in the round. That's going to mean Gambit will be susceptible to a burst play later on in the, in the round for Furia. So we'll have to Keep our eyes out for that one from them. A pilgrimage from Gambit, professing their innocence, but there's no one in the booth to listen to that. Nothing but punishments coming their way from Furia. Got to be careful though not to give a rifle away, of course. Got the uh, most amazing loss bonus with these rifles, and Vinny will get dropped, actually. And there's nobody got... Oh, oh, oh no, oh, oh. okay. They need to uh, stop Gambit from getting these rifles. 
I respect it from Art though, James. He's pulling out the knife. He's just going for it. Just brazen stuff. And he needs to. He needs the man to be the man to do that. Um, again, Furia, before Art joined the team, played a more traditional level of Counter-Strike. But Art's like, no, W key is how we play this. Forward is the only way. Aggression at all times. They take the lead now in this first map of this best of three series. And I think if you are watching from GoTV at home, then Art would be a good person to watch because that man likes to lead by example. You can see the AWP coming out for the T side, but we can see you soon will. But there will be an AWP for Shiro as well. And I love the energy right now that we're seeing in the Brazilian corner. Fantastic stuff. 3-2 now as Fury take the lead. AWP's coming out to play for both sides. And you can see that Gambit, as expected, not going too aggressive on Banana. Actually playing a stack towards A, rotating across Hobbit for that four man defense. And here comes a slight push into the top mid area. We've got Fury testing here, but not everybody in this one. Oh, this is looking dangerous. Oh, unable to find anything with the AWP. And they've lost Yuri already towards that top mid area. They have to abandon it. And Gambit realized this. They're rotating back towards the B site. Crowd rising the players on the server. I want to hear some dueling chants because there is a lot of support for Gamba here as well. See the intentions of Furia now. As there is still a lot of time on the clock here. 45 seconds is a long time now. Is that an execute or is that an invitation to throw some counter utility? Well, it looks like it will be an execute into the site. Now Hobbit's still in an elevated position. Drop fly into the air. Not making a connection though. They were lining up for Hobbit, but the wall got in the way eventually. So they've taken position on the site, which means Art will soon have post-plant positions with the AWP. And Vinny will hold down the ruins as well. Three on three as Gambit have to consider losing it all. But Axile's come in from the back. And now Vinny is alone, trying to clutch it from the coffins. Trying to isolate the fight. There's the first one for Vinny. Do you want to push him now? Vinny trying to do what he can, but it will be around in the bag for Gambit. <laughs> that looks very scary indeed. And Okay, that was the first time in Fury going into a site now against the stack, not quite working out for them, but they did do a lot of great damage. They managed to take down three players. So the pressure is still on Gambit's economy. It's still quite fragile at this stage. And we'll see Fury having to spend everything here. So this round will be worth two for whoever wins it. So we'll see what Fury bust out. Again, they've kept the pace pretty slow so far throughout every single T round that they've had, opting to, to just wait everything out and we can see the Gambit's response again. They, they don't burn too much at the beginning of rounds because of this. So again, this is something we might see Fury exploit later on. We know how much they love being aggressive on the server. There is the Brazilian contingent at the front. They uh, bring in plenty of hype. Even before we went live, those guys were going absolutely crazy. And they're in for a long ride versus Gambit. We had a timeout from Fury, which has come and gone now. And they'll be back into the game. Now, they didn't have the money for necessarily everything they wanted. Five AKs on deck for Furia. And maybe that will be an intention to a faster round, perhaps, as they will be more nimble with all the players. First comes the take of Banana, as per usual. And of course, Gambit have got to mix up how they're doing things as well. You don't want to be telegraphing your intentions here. So, you won't be going for a full fight on Banana early. But what does that mean for Furia? They've got some pre fire. As we can see, there is some action to be had here. Shiro will, Shiro will say hello. But uh, everyone's alive for now. So if you are ready for these tricks, it looks like. And now we see the aggression towards Banana, so there's no response on the other side of the map. Yeah, I love that initial apartments play there from Gambit. Really unpredictable. I think Shiro is kicking himself not being able, being able to make that pick. But in the meantime, Fury now making their way up Banana and Hobbit. He's going to be on the receiving end of this. He's actually already spent some bullets. Yuri takes him down straight through the smoke, and they're going to charge into the site. There's only one player here. Nafani Shiro has the cross. Nice shot. Able to take down drop. But Nafani in the back site, unable to stay alive as well here. So Fury are taking the losses, but they've got side control. Shiro, gap in the smoke there, perhaps for him to work with. But not opening himself up to those avenues either to be taken down. It's three versus three. They're not going to slow down. Oh, the spray comes through from Keiserato. And that's going to leave Shiro in spawn. And I don't know if he can do anything now in this position. Furia do need to be careful, though. You don't want to start hunting too early because if you give him a, a one versus two, he might just go for it. 
Victoria looking to take the lead once again. Shiro just holding for now, hiding in plain sight, if you will. We'll see if the jiggle comes through from Kei Serato, but very nicely done, avoiding the flashbang, controlling the B bomb site. Again, they are taking position on the bomb site, Furia successfully finding these post blunt spots. A warning shot from Shiro and Furia. Again, they don't have too much money themselves, so they will try to balance things out and uh, start to build their own coffers as well. A fourth round in a bag for Furia, four to three on the first map of this series, Inferno. Tentative stuff to begin with. Please don't be a. There we go. Nice. <laughs> you don't know people from the internet. That last picture could be absolutely anything, but at least it was text. Well, we have an interesting situation here. James Furia finally really breaking the economy of Gambit after long, arduous rounds. It's a great pop through on Banana, resetting after that initial parade towards the A site, towards top mid in the Parvis. And so far, so so good, I think, for Fury. They're looking really, again, everything that they're doing looks very disciplined and very consistent. So that, you know, definitely spells great things for their future in this, in these coming rounds. And however, Shiro with the AWP, he could definitely cause some problems here. He last round went for the apartments pick. I wonder where he'll go this time and check out his spawn. He's looking like he's moving towards the, the B site. So Shiro, AWP on Banana, that's the danger point for Furia. Yeah, it's interesting how, <coughs> excuse me, how he will approach Banana if he heads there, which he looks like he is, because there's next to no utility for Gambit. So if there are Molotovs and so on, he may be compromised. There is a smoke on Napoli, but that is the only thing. Now, there's a there's, uh, few rounds I like more than a hero AWP, mainly on the CT, CT side, because especially on a map such as Inferno, it's so fun to watch, because you've got to take some risk. You've got to try and... Force the issue, peek into an angle. So nafani has got a, a flashbang, which could potentially help Shiro, but that is about it. And again, when you've landed a shot or fired a shot, at least, another question is, do you rotate to the other side of the site? Well, there's the first kill. So a question, does he go towards A? It wasn't what I meant to say. That's pretty much what you expect, but do you play against that expectation? Nafani may try to pick up a rifle. He does have a smoke grenade. Exile forced away, but no one's there to see it. A minute on the clock for Furia to dodge the rest of these AWP positions, but they don't know where Shiro is now. We have Vinny going back to get the bomb at the moment, so we can expect Furia to start thinking about where they want to finish. Oh, it's very deep there on the Porsche position, trying to get that information, and this will determine where they take the bomb. Oh, it takes down one, but there's more players there. Is this going to be a full sense of security? He's going to spot the next one. Oh, it's a labored spray. He's given up the AK. He's given up the kill. Yuri's there to protect it, though. Three versus four in favor of Gambit as they actually decide to take the bomb towards this A site. 30 seconds to go, and Shiro is ready to cut this off. This is going to be a disaster here for Fury. Oh, the flash is perfect. Absolutely. I thought he was going to go deeper to the off angle. Sees one in boiler. That's not a bomb carrier, but he must realize what's going on. 23 seconds, Inter's ringing the bell from close range, and this is going to go disastrously for Furia now. Drop alone, 1v3, 15 seconds, two players, one ahead of the smoke, one behind. Spots Joe on the reload, and he's got time to plant the bomb. Nafani's in library, he's got to go faster, he has to do it now. Nafani peaks and close, but Gambit tied the score. Started with an AWP, finished with the round. Oh, that is heartbreaking there. That was so, that was such a clenched moment there where he's like just casually running through the site, reloading, and there's another player right in front of him. Four to four, Gambit. Oh man, what a great round for them to pick up there. They need to win another one here to really cement it. And you better believe that Fury are not going to allow to, that to happen easily. They forced it up again. There's been so many forced buys from them. I love it. Yeah, the full buy has been rare. So far, oh my god, Art got absolutely deleted very quickly indeed. And Axile's gonna go and maybe try and give them a taste of their own medicine, but Furia are ready for that, ready for the challenge. Tech Nines are dangerous, and there are two on the server right now in the hands of Furia, and maybe a rifle to collect later on, as Gambit may abandon top mid later, but for now, Shiro is still creeping on shorts. I love just the audacity of the mid push. I think you're doing that when you expect a full eco, so. Nasty surprise for Axile, but I think it's come out pretty well for them. You can see that Fury now. Looking towards that A site with the bomb. And Scambit, not looking for any additional information. They've got Shiro there ready to spot the top mid take. They've got some eyes passively on top banana as well. So Gambit, they continue to play things passively against here, Fury, here against Fury, and you can't blame them, given how dangerous Fury are. And once again, Fury are really killing the time on the clock, and Gambit actually deciding to rotate. I believe they heard sound cues there towards alt mid. 
Oh, actually, Nafani's going back. Well, there comes the pop flash. Absolutely blind. Shiro in shotgun distance. Spots the bomb, though. That's an awkward position now for Furia. Shiro with two. Dancing around double stack. And how on earth can they get this one? Keiserato one versus four to take nine. And doesn't really have a position. Gambit, maybe finally they can stabilize in this first half. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's pr I was praising Fury and how methodical their approach was, how it looked really consistent. But I mean, you can definitely say the same for Gambit here and how they've been working their CT side so far. You know, they've been taking a pretty passive and consistent approach. Also not trying to open themselves up too much in the early round with those aggressions. Except the push down made from Axel. But I think he was expecting like full blocks on what he found. But indeed, five to four in favor of Gambit. Now as we move into a, I think maybe the first full save round we have seen so far in round 10 here from Furia. Well, the numbers game is going to be apparent on Banana, but Gambit are able to fall back with one kill and plenty of information. I don't know if there's any more grenades or anything. Well, that'd be a nice spread of bullets for Gambit. The support is here. Very nice indeed. And indeed, it does look like we have a stable Gambit now. As they've got a full buy in the hole. So Furia are going to have some extra work to do if they are to uh, put Gambit on the back foot once again. Two rounds behind now on this T side of Inferno. There will be a tactical timeout from Furia as they decide their way forward. Yeah, this is a really interesting point in the match as well. You know, we're not super deep just yet, but Gambit taking the lead, stabilizing on their economy. They have the AWP. This would be a moment where Shiro would feel very confident, I would say, to put an aggression against Furia. Try to find a way to get an early disruption, an early pick somewhere. You know, previously we saw a three-man setup in the apartments, but Shiro was set up to deal with the players taking control as part of the default going into halls. It didn't work out for him that time, but I think it's just a matter of time, honestly, until Shiro gets some love with those forward plays. Back into the game we go. It is live now, and we can see the rifles are out for Fury up. The Mac 10 for Arts. So I imagine Art will be the man to run through with a pop flash and create some space for his team to make mince meat out of Gambit. Gambit will have Exile and Inters making their way towards Long again. So another two man setup on Long. Although Exile is rotating elsewhere. So we'll see how much of a priority top mid is. But for now, Nafani blind on Banana. A five versus four. And again, look at the utility for Furia. They've got so much with which to execute on a site. But hold on, are they gonna actually push this? Because um, there's nobody to pick up the bomb just now, but they are really committing to this. So this is gonna be very interesting indeed. Case Rato now hopping up, Hobbit, trying to stay alive, but Case Rato's on top. He could fall to the flames here. He's gonna be real careful. Bomb has been collected. Oh. But Gambit are on the site now. We can see that um, Yuri is on the A-bomb site, seeing if it's safe. And I would expect a rotation now. They must realize that most of Gambit are on this B-bomb site, but the bomb's still heading towards B. Don't want it to get caught off in the rotation just in case. Hold on a second, Inters pushing that smoke now, leaving Shiro alone in a one versus three. That bomb is heading elsewhere, but it won't be necessary. Furia taking both bomb sites because Furia and taking the round as well. <laughs> Absolutely. It's so funny because you know that they also have this. You know, we saw this in the in the, the playoffs, uh, not in playoffs, sorry, already in the tournament in this major that we had that situation, that crazy scenario where Fury, you know, they, they tap the bomb in the B site, then run all the way back to the A site. So they, they are that they are the team that does stuff like that. So I think it must be so hard to read if you're Gambit. Like, what is what do these pieces of information actually mean? Because as you say, they took the opportunity, they got the opening picks. Yeah, they're going to take the site. Doesn't matter if they have the bomb or not. They know how to communicate to play off of a scenario like that. So five to six, they've now put Gambit into a position where they spent all their money. And you know, similarly, again, this round is worth two for these teams. Furia getting a lot of value off of their banana take in that previous round. And we've got AWP on Shiro again, as well as Art. So I think we can expect, I would expect to see something from Shiro here. And he is going to be moving towards the, maybe we'll get a hall set up again from him actually. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get that hall set up again. We'll see if it's more successful this time. And yeah, we'll see what the approach is from Furia as well. 
Exile is not going to last very long in the apartments whatsoever. Another five versus four for Furia. And again, that play out of the balcony in the previous round is uh, strong for Furia for the rounds to come because do you full rotate to a site? Do you leave a person there? Much like versus Pro are able to pull you to a bomb site and leave the other one completely abandoned and rotate in for free, even on Vertigo. Furia, you might argue, can do it just as well or even better. Yeah, it's a scary one, but Hobbit's actually with the incendiary. He's done a lot of damage. He's taken a player down and managed to do a lot of damage to drop. Fury will take top mid. They've made a lot of noise there, but again, Gambit have only four players. And they know that Fury is a team that might represent pressure in one area, and then, but go the other place entirely. And Shiro is going to take down Vinny. That looks like an A play, but the bomb is going back. They force a rotation towards A from the CTs. There's a window here into the B site, a window where Fury have created a three versus one. We have Nafani creeping back through CT. Can Fury get to Hobbit in time before he gets assistance? They're going to isolate him with the smoke. Hobbit, though, at the back of the site. He's got to hold this down by himself. Is he going to be able to do this? It's going to be the first challenge for Hobbit. It's a double peak, and Yuri takes him out. Great wide swing from Yuri, but he gets the kill as well, so even better for him. We can see that Banana is in the hands of Shiro. Don't expect Furia will try to venture there, especially with the CT smoke gone. Three on three. They're on the bomb site already, though. Looking away from a flashbang, Yuri will fall. Shiro with two arts remaining now, and it's one versus three. Inter's the man with the kit. Got to keep an eye on where he falls. Close to the bomb already, however. And there's a double peek to jump up on Coffins. Nice retake from Gambit as they move to seven on their CT side. Oh my god, Shiro just executing three players makes it look so pedestrian. Just the most, I think that's like the most nonchalant AWP 3k I've seen in recent memory. Seven to five after that amazing series of shots from Shiro. He's 13 4 5 at the moment, so really doing a great job doing his job for the team. For the team. Shiro has incredible stats actually at this major so far. And Fury not going to give things up without a fight. AWP on R, everybody else. I mean, <laughs> we have pistols. This round could be interesting here from Fury. How do they decide to handle it? Oh, oh, it's, oh he's absolutely destroyed Nafani. He goes for more. Of course he does, but that's going to backfire. But K Serato could collect that AWP, and indeed, he will. <laughs> the bomb is still so far away, Chase. How do they quickly capitalize if they manage to make these kills? This is very, very furious stuff, I have to say. So much time for them. So little information for Gambit. They are playing retake on the B bomb site, trying to stay close together, trying to help each other as best they can. But that is with basically no position outside of the bomb sites itself. And I say that plural, but only A has people on it right now. Although Shiro is close to now. He's posted up on Banana. Well, on the B bomb site, rather. 55 seconds, so much time to be denied information, but Axel might have the right angle. Case okay, Rato's head will be very squishy in round 13. Man advantage now for Gambit. AWP quickly collected though. There's the Hall's pop flash. They don't hear any response, they don't hear any repositioning. But you still have to be really worried if you're Ooh. Gambit. Down goes Hobbit. They know one's in the pit as well. Three on three, 30 seconds on the clock. Vinny's flying through. Axel has a crossfire, but he won't need it. That leaves Yuri to consider his options. He'll push forward, drop the AWP, and an eighth round to Gambit. Well, all right, straight into the next one. And it looks like we're going to be in a situation here whereby we've got that AWP continuing on Shiro. We've got the MAC-10 on on, everybody else buying up the AKs, and they're going fast for that banana control. Ars looking to draw. Oh, my goodness, he's just taking the drive-by. It's dangerous here. Shiro stays alive. It's taken, oh man, they actually managed to get Nafani through there and that's going to be a huge win. Art still wants to pressure into CT spawn. He's gone down though. Four versus four, a minute and 20 seconds to play with. And now Fury are cool off, but they've managed to sneak Vinny up deep on top mid as well. They've got forward presence. And again, Gamba have to decide, what does this all mean? Yeah, Shiro, no idea where to go, but even so, Gambit have won five of the last six rounds. So while it looks difficult, Furia needs to get back to converting once again, going deep. But he knows Exile is on the A bomb site. So worst case scenario, they've got a three versus two on the B bomb site, and that just might be enough for them as they start to push through. Hobbit looking at the off angle, not sure if he's been spotted just yet, but he's got to warn his teammates that there are big problems on this B bomb site. Can't find a connection onto drop, however, and Shiro has an angle for now. I don't see a smoke for Furia. And it looks like he's going to go for the save. Yeah. 
Definitely. Man, Fury is so difficult to deal with. Just the, <laughs> just the aggression, the levels of aggression are incredible. There, oh, just trying to just get himself through to spawn. The, you can see the, the benefit of their playstyle. You know, Art in the previous round, you know, getting the AWP, his teammates sort of half buying around it, gives them all this firepower. That's a super winnable round. Then you go into the next round, he's got a MAC-10, everyone else has AKs because he spent so much. But they know how to use that strategically to have a very strong round. And again, we talked about running those faster paces. It gives you now in, in the later portions of this first half, because Drew was so slow to begin with, now they're able to get up and on it for free in a lot of these cases because Gav is just not wanting to part with their utility early on. So that makes those MAC-10 plays even better from R. And with that round win, that's a 6-8 score and it's looking pretty even going into the last round of the first half here in this best of three. Yeah, early on I was concerned for Gambit CT side, but it's looking pretty reasonable at the moment. Yeah. As we move into the last round of the first half, one AWP will be in the hands of Shiro. We'll see what he can do with it. He's got flashes coming his way immediately, but still try for it, make a connection. Nothing doing on this occasion. Well, the AWP is towards the bomb site, and Shiro, some parkour into the apartments, and it's their turn to get a five on four. See Gambit stopping any response to that with a Molotov top banana straight away. Oh, Axel's just going. It's a five versus four in favor of Gambit, but Axel's going for the information here. He might get an angle on one of these players. Shiro takes down Vinny at top mid, and he's going to back away straight into Axel, but he doesn't connect the bullets. And now they know that there's a push in apartments. They know that Gambit have every piece of info. Fury, it's the last round. They have to find a way to win this. There's no saving in a round like this. How do they do it? They have a minute to figure it out. Drops lining up a Molotov, but they are being contained on Banana right now. Yeah, Gambit, three men up, have Exile standing in mid, so that means a three versus two on this B-bomb side. Flash is coming through, and it's made even worse. Yuri alone now versus five. Exile and Shiro creeping forward. Very uncomfortable final round for Furia. Nine rounds on the CT side for Gambit. I would say that's fantastic for them. Yeah, they were so stable against Furia and the way that Furia approached the T side. I feel like both teams, it never felt like either team was really out of it. Both teams looking very dangerous at the end of this first half. Great start for this best of three. I'm loving what we're seeing so far. But now things change quite dramatically because we're going to get Furia on that CT side. And I feel like they're going to give us a few more looks that we saw out of Gambit in terms of how, they, how aggressively they want to go for map control. Also, a very good sign, James. I, have, I must say that for Gabbit, Shiro is absolutely delivering so far. Of course. And you would expect that on the CT side, the luxury of the CT angles. AWP, a lot more difficult on the T side post-plant. It is very, very dangerous indeed and can convert rounds for you when you are up against the numbers. So we'll see if he can get that far and what he can do before that bomb is planted. I have to rely on the riflers to make space on this. We can see something exceptional from Shiro. But first comes a pistol, sees it up close for Arch, got Vinny for a double peak, but Nafani at point blank range with the Glock will start the proceedings quickly, dispatched by Vinny as we move to a four on four. Hobbis looking for something here, and there goes the jump out of the balcony. Yuri's lying in wait. Tay Serato takes down Hobbit. Oh, straight to the face from Axel, still keeping the effort alive, but not for too much longer, leaving Shiro in the one versus three. Very, very difficult indeed, especially considering he has 19, 10 points of health. Basically, he's very, very low. And he's now extremely dead, thanks to Vinny. Furia, pick up the pistol. And you know what, James? In terms of, if there was a, to be a script for this game so far, I'm loving that because we've had Gambit picking up the pistol in the first half. Furia now equalizing, going to the second. And we could, we should expect probably the 9-9. That's how it's supposed to go. So, so far, Looking neck and neck between Furia and Gambit on Inferno. Is that a bison I see? Art currently has three kills, which I expect will change very quickly on the CT side, of course. Yeah. If you've got a certain role, we saw him with the MAC-10, um, with the difficult jobs on the first half. So again, doesn't tell the whole story. Got to w swing wide and make space for your teammates. And sometimes that includes dying. But as long as they clean up and take that space, we saw what they could do when they could take the beat bomb site, for example. I won't expect him to be an average show in this CT half case, Serato. So we'll see what they can do. But first, they've got a contest with five Tech Nines. I'm telling you, it is the rise of the Tech Nine. 
in this post Deagle nerf world, five tech nines is very, very scary indeed. And I spoke about art stats, but he's got a Bison versus five tech nine, so I'm not really sure if he improves it on this round. Yeah, very dangerous round indeed for Gambit. He can't have meant to buy that on purpose, surely. They're looking to go for that top mid play, going really fast up to the arch side. You can see the Fury giving the space up. Not challenging Gambit just yet. Vinny has got to be so careful going towards the quad angle, the short angle. It's looking pretty good right now. Fury putting a stop to this push, but Nafani creeping towards library. Can he find oh. anything? They've been completely denied off the force by. Furio will be extremely pleased with that. I wanted to see that Bison in action. The quarterfinals of a major, and there's a bison. <laughs> I know, I know, they love it. What is going on? I don't even know what button it is to buy the, what, 3-5? B3-5? No don't ask me. <laughs> I'm not, I don't bunch the shooting potatoes of people. A bison. Oh, he's got a spawn. He's got a bison and the spawn. What could he possibly do with this? If someone can make it work, it's probably going to be, let's be honest, and I'm sure he's going to try and do something outrageous and completely disrespectful. The bison's down mid! Oh, he's going oh, straight. Come oh on. God. I needed something from that. Anything. That is just lunacy that us going for that. It's so insane. I can't believe it. You've got to love the personality from out there, trying to deliver for the fans, make this one entertaining. And I mean, it's going to. I, mean, I don't know if his team's, teammates are a fan of that play because it's a five versus four now in favor of Gambit. Yeah, sure, they don't have armor or any util. But now Furia. They, they, oh. Okay. Hobbit. Ask me sitting on, on the, you know, watching his teammates right now, feeling probably pretty bad for himself. Shiro's got the bison. Shiro has got the bison. The bison is in play. Furia, though, have three players remaining. They have range. That's about all they have going for them at the moment. They've got some utility. But one of these sites is going to have five players heading their way. That's a lot of trade fragging opportunity for Gambit. Cannot say the same for Furia. However, Nafani and Axile are very low. Do you send... Okay, so the low health player is going in first. But what's behind him? More low health now. Yuri's got a tech nine. The bullets are coming out, but Shiro's got a bison. What can he do with it? He's taken position at least. That bison, who knows? 25 seconds. Case Rato in the pit spot. Shiro go past. He hasn't got the angle to stop this plant. Post plant bison is in play. Hobbit's picked up an M4, and he's the only player left alive. Three... Well, one versus three here for Hobbit. He's so far away from the bomb at the moment. And he might even try to hold on to this one and just try to maximize the kill potential, which is looking quite good. He might get a double here. They surely won't expect this angle. They surely won't expect oh! oh, Hobbit, he's on. He's on to win this one now. He's going to try to deny the defuse here. Keiserato is going to see the smoke. Does he go for the stick? Hobbit has to go around the corner. And it's Keiserato to lock it in. You can see Hobbit felt like he had that one. And honestly, James, that was way too much damage. If you're Furia and you, you know, <laughs> you're not happy with, with the fact that they've just almost wiped out your entire team, and then they get the bomb plant as well. The pressure is not going to be let off anytime soon from Gambit. Yeah, and we saw something similar from Furia on their T side when Gambit had one player surviving. And again, you know, when, when there's a, a Bison in Art's hands, that is full commit no matter what the situation is. And it proved to be very expensive in the end. Very deceptive on that buy menu, the Bison. But hold on a second, Furia have got not one, but two sniper rifles in round number 19. And that could be a nasty surprise. Yuri has few places to stand. Has he been seen pushing though? I do wonder, I think he has been. He's got a stand and fight with four HP. He won't last very long. But sh that might just encourage even more aggression from Furia. We know what they like to do. They have three smokes remaining with a minute 30 on the clock. And uh, Gambit, not shy for a slow round themselves, so we'll see if they can hold on to those. Yeah, I love what Gambit are doing there. They're, they've got Hobbit waiting outside the halls, just trying to the apartments, trying to make sure that if there's an info play from Furia, he can catch it, they can punish it. And meanwhile, the rest of his teammates taking, towards, uh, taking control towards Banana. So Furia, absolutely in a horrendous position here. Cannot save them. Will he get the opportunity to? He's not trying to slow things down here. There's a flash for the re-peak. Can he find anything off of this? They are definitely going to be challenging this angle. Can Art deliver for the team? This is such an important moment to get a kill out of this one. Trying to anticipate the jump, trying to find the frag. Oh no, he's shot between two players and in goes Gambit to that B site. You see that smoke was trying to suggest that two players were on Banana, but by the time he got taken out, didn't slow them down too much. They will focus on the site now, but they have taken position, which means that Fury are going to try and hold on to what they have. 
anything more would be throwing good money after bad. And it will be Gambit taking this 10th round. A very difficult beginning to this round for Furia. Losing a player, pushing in the apartments. 9 HP before he could even peak Yuri. Of the two AWPs, only one exists at the moment in Gambit. And maybe on the hunt for a little more. But again, just a small detail there with that Molotov by the sandbags, a very fast smoke grenade. So hey, if Art gets a kill there on Banana, for, uh, Gambit don't know if anybody's around or behind that smoke or not, which makes it even harder. Didn't go that way on this occasion. And Gambit will move to 10. Yeah, that, that kill from Art is, is absolutely everything for sure. And it's tough sometimes to connect those ones. And Gambit, 10 rounds now against the Nine of Furia. And they're looking pretty good. Right now we're seeing some of that aggression from Fury early on, but it does seem like Gambit are quite ready to deal with that. Throughout this entire matchup so far, you can see how aware and stable Gambit are when it comes to these moments of just keeping the round in check, making sure that they're able to set up traps as necessary, making sure that they're always able to counter what Fury are doing. It's, oh, this is a huge round. Two AWPs coming out from Furia. They are really, really mixing it up here. How is this one going to work out? We've got Case Rato looking to go aggressive there. Denied because Ooh. of the util. Look how much fire is on Banana right now. Massive battle of utility. Three players here for Furia to try to hold on to this one. And surely we'll get that reset into top mid take from Gambit because they've given up position here towards Banana. Yeah, second round with double orbs for Furia. Didn't really get off to the start they were looking for with that early four versus five previously, but they are not in a similar situation on this occasion. You can see they will take half of Banana for now, and Gambit will look to head towards the safe bomb site. Hobbit creeping in the apartments already. Very decorated Hobbit. Strong addition to this team, and Yuri's hungry for something, but of course, Fury are not, they're not going to chill for too while. They've barely got any chill. Hobbit will be delivered in the hands of Furia in those apartments and now Case Rato is waiting for the swing, misses the jiggle but Vinny's here to clean up, seen the bomb rang the bell of Nafani as well this has gone from good to great for Furia but they've got to find more, we can see Axel creeping through that smoke and you've got to wonder about the scope finds out before it goes the other way around Vinny's on fire in the flames, not sure where to go and how has it turned around into a 3 on 2 for Gambit they've got Case Rato creeping on the site, down he goes leaving drop in a 1 versus 3 this round has collapsed for Furia. Yeah, the double AWP pickup as well. It's an expensive one to lose and drop. Is he able to salvage one of them in Arch here? We can see this was Art's AWP. He's going to be able to steal that one away. But yeah, they'll be absolutely gutted because they had so much going for them there, Furia, in the round. It did look like it was a complete shutdown. And Gabby seemed honestly stuck around, around Arch. Huge pickups by them. And again, Furia. They need a little bit more here. They're just a little bit more. Gambits have overpass as the second pick of this series, which is a map that Furia have beaten Gambit on before at the last Premier Spring Showdown, 16 to 14. But they won't want to give up Inferno, and it, it's looking difficult for them. It was looking difficult early on for Gambit on their CT side. The same could be said for Furia, perhaps even worse. Again, if you're joining us late, both teams have split pistols. They've both won their CT pistol. 11 to 9 now to score. Hero AWP in the hands of Kay Serato. We've had two rounds of double orcs for Fury, and they haven't really hit the mark, haven't really given them the chances they were looking for. Uh oh. I'm so afraid for Kay Serato here, James Chiro. Again, this, is, this has been the theme for me. Gambit just seemed ready. They're ready for the kinds of plays that Fury make. Oh, okay, so also trying to get a little hop over the smoke. He's been spotted going for the play. Again, Gambit ready for everything right now. It's going to take some really crazy shots. There's the pop flash. Drop, can he connect? No! Intos takes him down. Axel's going to push forwards, looking for the entry. He will get it. And that's a very open B site. The smoke goes through. And that means that Keiserato has no way to do any uh, further damage in this round against Gambit. And once more, the AWP will be carried through to the next round unless... Gambit go hunting, and they definitely, I'm sure, are thinking about it because they've got enough money to take some losses here. They are already spreading out to find that orb. The chain flashes, I mean, it was only a USP, but the chain flashes on that B-bomb site were really impressive by Gambit. And again, with more full buys coming through for Furia, 
Those chain flashes are going to be a real problem in the rounds to come for them to try and hold down these bomb sites. But again, maybe Fury will take the fight as they like to before that happens. And it will show that it's going to be so important to hold down that banana area for Fury to stop that from happening. DNA all over the fountain. Someone get the chlorine. And there it is. 12 rounds now on the board for Gambit against the nine for Furia. So Furia, after that opening pistol, they've not really found the success. Going into the proper gun rounds, Gambit, it's just a story of their successes. AWPs for Shiro and also for Keiserato on Fu in the camp of Furia. Art once again picking up that MP9, and I, I'm honestly looking forward to seeing the kinds of shenanigans we're going to get from Art as he moves towards Banana. Yeah, he's taking one for the team with the weaponry on both sides. And again, Banana will be important. See how much more utility is dumped there. HE's towards the tree. Many, many moons ago, you could be boosted into the tree on the older Inferno. And it was nice to sit there like a pleb, doing nothing to contribute really to a round. I miss that. Look at the pace now from Gabbard. Here a gambling on this, this little porch setup. Cesarato looking after Boiler. And effectively the double elevated peak for any players coming up top mid towards that short position. There goes Nafani, flashing up, trying to get position. Oh, he somehow absolutely owns Yuri. Oh no, that is a huge loss for Fury. That whole setup was there to deal with that sort of play. And now Gambit reset into B. Fury do have two players on the B side. That's drop and up. That's an MP9 and M4. They have one smoke and one flash to defend this bomb site. But there are 35 seconds on the clock, so maybe if Ark can get a multi frag, there's an option. Smoke is down. There's a counter flash as well, or a team flash. Not sure which one, but Ark, his position is really important. 25 seconds and they're rotating away. Nafani's been creeping in the apartments this whole time. He has the sound cues here. Fury did this themselves, and it's going to happen to them at the hands of Nafani. Had to be looking for that one. And it just goes from bad to worse. Everybody falling to Furia one after the other. Fell for their own trick on the A-bomb site. With the dying seconds, Gambit plant five players up. Furia have got to find a way into this half. That's so unfortunate. I don't believe that Nafani had any idea that Keiserato was there in the pit position. If Keiserato kills Nafani, I think the round is over for Gambit because I, th I think uh, Keiserato would be able to hold the line and delay the plant long enough that the round would have been won for Furia. So some of these is coming down to these marginal spots where one shot makes the difference. And that is a tough one to swallow for Furia. Can they hold on to these guns? They need them. Drop as another player. It's, oh, it's the pistol coming through and drop goes down to Shiro. And that is a full wipeout for Furia. They've lost everybody and they've got very little money left in the tank for this round. Gambit looking like it is smooth sailing in on Inferno on the second half. Oh. Yeah, I haven't really seen a competitive round, I feel like, from Furia on their CT side. Art still has three kills. We need to stop seeing the MP9s at this point, I think, and see more full buys and rifles. But as I say that, it's two MP9s, so it's getting even worse for Furia as Gambit head into the clutch rounds here. 13 to 9 now, three rounds away from taking Furia's pick. And I, I can not really remember an advantage for Furia in this second half, outside of the pistols, of course. An AWP, some bits and bobs, if you will. Waiting for that first peak off Furia, we'll see if they creep forward. The Gambit have been dismantling them. Oh, there's a retake set up here, James, a pop flash. Will, it be, will the timing work out? Oh, okay, Serato with the whiff there. Arthur oh, with the flash, can he make better of it? Yes, he can. He takes down the first player. Is there cover? It does has to go deep, but Art will deflect him, and they've held on to this one. We talked about them not having any advantages in recent memory, but here's one, but fast response. Gabbit straight into the A site. Can they close the distance? Yes, they can, Hobbit. With that opening kill makes things very hard here for Vinny, but he's going to be able to hold on with the MP9 just barely. But Napoli with the trade makes life complicated. But Furia, they finally have the players in position. And Shiro against three. It's only got 40 seconds to do this. I think he realizes where that smoke has come from. <laughs> he might be able to jump up indeed. He knows it. He could jump up onto the site. Maybe take a close duel of 30 seconds. Try and one shot with the Tech 9. 
You can see him jiggling forward, drops, oh my days! Drop had to have seen him first. Now he's got post plot of an AWP, and that spells trouble for Furia. Smoking off a choke point allows him to reposition Scopeton as he moves forward. An aggressive angle on Banana. Case Ratto has no idea where he is. You can see them waiting now. They don't have a kit, these players. I'm not sure if there's one on the site, but they've got to find him soon, and he could be anywhere. One wrong move, and it's a 1v1 versus the Orp of Shiro. Oh, creeping forward! How on earth has he won that duel? Wow. Wow, I was so afraid for Furia there. Shiro is like the last person you want to be up against in that position. Furia, oh man, oh, what a clutch, clutch shot. And that is going to keep them alive in this one. Had they lost that round, they would have been in so much trouble, but they still have a very good shot turning this one on its head. Short, three rounds behind. You know, you've got Gambit on those 13 rounds, but the economy is, is back in action here for Fury. They've got way more utility. If they want to take position aggressively early, they have the option to do that. But ah, oh, in this round was a savior for Furia. And finally, they've got something to cheer about. They were quiet for a while and this half has been somewhat depressing for them, I think it's fair to say. But with that one round from Furia, they're three behind Gambit. They're at double figures. There's some signs of promise. Hello, Vinny looking for two, but the Hobbit will be there to trade. Nafani and Vinny have been working together around these apartments to cause all kinds of problems. And hold on a second. Case Rato deleted again. Yuri has got to deliver now, but it's just not hitting their shots. Oh, it's heartbreaking for Fury. Just a timing on Keiserato, and then that next, that next duel lost, and then the round's over. Just, oof. I mean, Gambit looking to go to 14. We have Fury on the save. They will be able to save an AWP and an M4. But given the fact that Fury just won the last round, their, their loss bonus has been completely reset. So they're going to have very little going into the next round. They're going to have to make the choice. So they force by around the AWP and M4, which I think that they will. But I mean, hold on, can they even hold on to this? Here's the challenge, can you believe it? Look at that boost to try to deal with art. And they are closing the distance. They are looking hungry to get rid of these remaining weapons. And if they are successful, Furia's best chances may have come and gone. Another round in the bag for Gambit. Stamping out the promise <laughs> that Furia had in that round. That is next level, the marshmallows. Yeah, good luck eating those. Gambit, two rounds away from this first map of the series, the pick of Furia, Inferno. Two rounds away. We've seen a lot of whiff shots with the AWP from Furia. We've seen a lot of problems for them. We've rarely seen a full buy for them in this half. That said, their backs are to the wall now, and that's maybe what they need. And the guys at the front cheering for them. I can hear their voices again. Timeout has come and gone. It has to be now for Furia. It has to be now. I can't really add anything else to that, James. That, that is it. That is the very point. It does have to be now for them. They've got to find something. So far, we've seen the heroics from Art in very needed spots. We need to see that from the rest of Furia as well. And Gambit, they, they are looking so confident at the moment. We've got what looks to be a very aggressive take around Banana here from Furia. Not too much to really contest with this on Gambit's end of things. They're happy to kind of wait out the initial util. Now the question is, do they want to play against this deep banana smoke or do they want to just take top mid? Because you've got Vin only Vinny here, so top, and the top mid take is certainly for free right now. Napoli, oh, he's pinned him down. There, there are flashes though, there's a smoke for Vinny. Oh, can he stay alive here? There goes the HE. Keiserato with the protection. Vinny's still stuck in his coming position. The smoke goes off to extinguish the flames, but he's stuck. There's a gap there, they know he's still there. Art repositioning, but that can surely be heard. That rotation can surely be heard. They'll put him out of commission with a smoke grenade for the time being, and I wouldn't be the one considering trying to push through that. A take of Banana, but at the same time, Hobbit is either Hobbit or it's Nafani, one or the other, still causing problems on A, leaving only one player on B. We talked about heroics. This, I mean, I was going to say, if they're going to be as a 1v3, the drop needs to execute, but in fact, 40 seconds to go and Gambit actually looking to rotate back to the A site. They have that forward position on Hobbit and he's probably picked up some audio cues for information for where those defenders are. And this, this pit site setup from Furia is extremely common. 
So we'll see if Gambit have utility left to deal with this. There is a Molotov smoke. HE is basically everything they need to dismantle this uh, this setup. Yuri, he's got to be absolute. I mean, they both have to be perfect on this defense. It's so important here for Furia. Yuri takes down one, has to hold on against that Molotov. Vinny picks it up as well. They're doing a great job here. Furia, they need this so desperately. Flash against the wall. The peak comes through from Vinny. It doesn't work, but Yuri steps up to the plate. And now it's the desperation plot for Shiro. Oh, can he deny this? Yes, Yuri denies it. Furia staying alive here. Yeah, they win the round. Much, much needed rounds. There's money that Gambit don't even need with that bomb plant, which means maximum pressure. Furia will move to 11. They will save two AWPs. But again, they're going to be on the ropes. They keep Gambit off game point, which I think is good for the mental psyche. They're only three rounds behind. Again, this half has been terrible for them. It's been absolutely terrible. But even so, especially with the help from the pistol, they're only three rounds behind. Gambit taking a timeout as we look to see who can take the next round. And three have got it. They've just, like, I think half the problem for them really is just hitting their shots. They've, they've had yeah. to jump on them with the AWP yeah. angles and they just haven't hit their shots. But also, the apartments, Nathani and Hobbit in the apartments are a massive can opener for, for Gambit, which Furia have not been able to deal with. They've tried to go into the apartments, try and get an early kill, but the trade frag is normally there. 4v4, minute 13 o'clock, advantage tease. Furia just can't get the upper hand with regards to Nathalie and Hobbit in the apartments in these rounds, and that's causing them all kinds of problems, along with all the jewels that are going the way of Gambit. Yeah, absolutely agree. And I mean, in our previous round, we at least saw huge moments there from, from uh, Yuri and Vinny on the defense. Great stuff from them. We're starting to see Furia power up a little bit. So we'll see what can happen here. We've got Art on the AWP as well. It's a normal 2-3 splits set up here for Furia. Hart is on Banana with that AWP, and Gambit looking to go for that Apartments take here. We'll see what they're able to find. There is some counter utility to slow things down. Oh, we actually have Furia possibly walking down Banana, but Shiro with that aggressive smoke, I think has deterred them from going any deeper. Okay, Serato is going to get flashed off. Vinny will have to hold. He's spraying through. Can he find one? Axel's looking for it, and he's absolutely punished. Vinny. That is absolutely crazy. Art doesn't really have the angles now. I think he's been hurt by Exile going for the flick and it falls apart again. The quick scope not there, the position not there. Five on two surrounded. They won't get a chance to save if Gambit win this round. Or will they? There's a rotation as they're looking to split the B bomb site now and there's more angles that Drop doesn't have. His silencer has conceded his position and surely his execution is nigh. There's gonna be DNA all over this area. And it's all Furia DNA and again, B is lost, A is being lost at the same time, all the weapons, all the money being lost for Furia as Gambit heads to game point. And there it is, Shiro takes Yuri down. 15 to 11, Gambit looking good for this one. Fury needs to elevate themselves. Once again, Gambit just getting the better of some of these fights snowballing the remainder of the rounds. What do we have here for Furia? Very little. Famas, MP9, CZ, Deagle. I mean, this is a very rough look for Furia. How do they win this one? They've been at the mercy of Gambit in most of these rounds. At the mercy. How do you take things into your own hands with these tools? They've got a few flashes, a few smokes. Some hopeful high explosive grenades. And you can see the urgency with regards to the apartments in the last round of that incendiary we saw on a balcony. But Gambit had so much time and Hobbit's there again. Loves the furniture in that room. And Gambit know that this is a force buy that's gonna look pretty, pretty wonky. But we'll see a top mid take into the stack here against Furio. If they're gonna have a chance, it's like this. Smoke goes down, there's no trade for that. And that gun is probably recoverable as well. You can see, I think the HE went there to try to blast the gun back to his teammates, and they're going to have to go quickly to that B site. It's desperation mode here for Gambit. Oh, he's found one, though. He's got another headshot. Oh, and now there's just two players left for Gambit. Two versus five. Can they find a way to turn this around? They've got some retake util. They'd love a molly. Don't have one. Love some rifles. Only got one. No kit, would love some of those as well, but they've got the numbers. Inters gets his bow rung immediately. How he's alive, I don't know. 
Only Inter's in Shiro now as Furia try to do what they can. Shiro left and right. Inter is still alive. The crossfire is still up in the red now. Inter three more to find. Can they get on the bomb in time though? Is there time to defuse the bomb? I think there is. Furia are still alive. I don't know how. I mean, they're hanging on the edge of the cliff right now, trying desperately to climb their way back up. And it's just always the way, isn't it? So sometimes the most unlikely rounds are the ones that you win and start back up that momentum. To see if Fury can get any of that momentum. It's buy upon buy from Gambit. It's unrelenting amounts of cash that they have to throw at Fury in these remaining rounds. They, I don't know how they've squeezed out the buy they have, but they've worked some magic for you. Two AKs will certainly help in round 28. You have to wonder if we're going all the way. I'd love to see it. And I'm sure the Brazilians at the front as well would love to see it. They've come a long way to see Furia succeed. And they need this overtime. No AWP now for Gambit. Five AKs. But again, they go to their favorite place, the apartment, to harass Furia later on. And it's a more passive opening here from Furia. Gambit, on the other hand, we've got Naphany just very deep on apartments already at quite an early timing. Could catch a rotation here through these site positions, but with that said, looking at it, we have Furia just holding. And they're going to bring a rotation. We've got Art, he's made his way across. Can he be the hero once again here for Furia? Smoke goes away, and Art picks up the kill. Five versus four, what do Gambit respond with as they look to take top mid control? Art was creeping on speedway back towards the B bomb site, but surely Case Rato hears some footsteps here. Not showing just yet out there on an island on his own. Are they going to check for him? Library's open for now, and there's concern for Gambit. Down goes Shiro, and it's even more. The bomb spotted as well. Five on two. Hold on a second. Furia coming back. Amazing stuff from Kei Serato, Hobbit, last player standing against five. How much damage can he do? Absolutely nothing. Kei Serato is coming alive at the perfect moment. It couldn't be any later, but he is needed. And that had to be just solid communication. You saw him in that cubby. He's in a position where obviously he doesn't want to allow to, the opponents to clear him methodically. And Furia, they must have called to him the timing to peak there, because that was absolutely perfect. Was perfect timing. And we have money still in Gambit. They have three MAC-10s. Can Furia survive against the MAC-10s? If they can, and there's no bomb plant, Furia, I think, are good for the overtime here. But there goes the fast banana take. Art oh, trying to hold here. Drop takes down two. There's another one. There's only two left here. Gambit getting absolutely wiped out. Maybe OT is a reality after all. Gambit are sent. Tail between legs. Back down banana without the bomb. That's exactly the round Furia needed. A perfect storm, a struggle in the second half. But now there's a chance, a force buy from Gambit. They'd be hoping for a bomb plant at the very least. The loss bonus is middling. It kind of sucks at the moment. And so does a two versus five with an AK and a Mac 10. They could try and do some damage if they can. Depending on who they kill, there'll be full buys anyway, I feel like. And then there was one. And again, let's not forget that bright lights of this stage are being seen for the first time. For many of these Gambit players, this scene, this atmosphere is alien to them. And you start to wonder if it plays a part. With this save, it's going to be interesting, the buy that we'll get. Oh, that's a huge frag to get from Shiro. But the question is, can he actually stay like this? 40 more seconds. They know what Shiro is. He's very weak. Only three points or two points of health. Yuri, if he just gets the one bullet, but can Shiro be quicker? He's beyond the angle. Oh, and he's done it. He's taken the AK from the hands Ooh, of full Shiro. Spray. I wonder, James, what the buy's gonna look like here. Because we're gonna go into the last round of the last half of map one. They've done some calculations. Axide and Hobbit have got 67k, so this is going to be a dangerous buy. I mean, even if it was tech nines, that would still be a dangerous buy, but this will be even more so with the AK-47s and the Galil for Nafani. But I do wonder if that Galil will make the difference with the apartment's um, presence. Who lands headshot first? Flashes towards second mid to suggest something. That will slow Gambit down later on. Near the Gambit crowd now starting to sing their name. See if he'll give them the encouragement they're looking for. And Furia better be loud as well. I love that play from Furia because it actually suggests that there's three players playing very aggressively towards apartments. So you can see that with that flashbang, it's like there is going to be a balcony peak or something like that. So look how much time is killed where you can see Hobbit now is having to 
he, he has to expect basically every type of setup here. He's checking for everything. And me, in the uh, meantime, we have Gambit moving up for that B control, the banana control. And Furia, off that initial show of fake presence towards second mid, they are extremely passive here. They are tr they're playing for the late game in this round. Well, I think they're trying to bait Gambit to go into the B site here as well. Oh, big nade. Very big nade indeed. But can they keep those chain flashes coming? Gambit would be good with them before, but Trump has the angles. Case Rato, he's got to be real careful. Arch, what are you doing? Case Rato, that distraction from Mark, the sacrificial lamb. Three on two for Furia. As they to plant the bomb in the elevated position, so any spray was not going to work out. But Case Rato will have position. How's he found Anthony? Hobbit's alone now. He's got so much to do that. This is insane. Hobbit. Three players to work against as he takes a position that he is going to be committed to them. There's no way to fall back. He is so committed here. As soon as they spot Hobbit, he could be done for. How does he get the jewels that he needs? He's got to be perfect. This might be the moment they're throwing the nades in. Hobbit trying to spray him down, but Yuri takes the kill. And Arts, oh my god, he has to be the most, the most insane player I've ever seen. He's pushed to smoke in this situation with an AWP James. Art is crazy. He's a He's lunatic. A lunatic. He does what he needs to do. He leads by example. He is the personification of that Furia art style. The way they play is all him. That is crazy. We're going to overtime. I cannot believe Furia had it in them, James. They had it in them to come back. They were looking out for the count. Gambit were winning rounds just with their resiliency, with their methodol methodology. It looks so clean. And then Furia, they went from missing their shots, James, to coming up clutch. They brought it to overtime, and maybe the worst is behind them as they glean more information to find out what works, what doesn't work in this CT hub. Three more rounds to go now as Furia try to hold on to their map pick of Inferno with the crazy plays from the man himself, Art. There are more plays to come. Full buy for everyone concerned. Three starting on Banana. Gambit not contesting too much at the beginning. Hobbit in a lot of fire, actually. Half Elf as is exiled. Pop Flash plays on Banana. Art saying hello, trying to tag through the wall. Gambit must be careful. <laughs> yeah, that was very scary stuff there, Top Banana. We'll get Gambit resetting out. But that's great news for Furia. As they still have that control, they have that information towards Banana as Gambit starts to pressure and take away Top Mid control. And this actually allows, as you can see, a rotation from Furia to assist A. However, if Gambit cut noise for a long time, Furia will have to rotate back to the B side. So we'll see if that happens here, because we know Gambit is comfortable playing a slow round. However, they are bolstering numbers here, and we might get a counterplay. Okay, Serato is playing really close. Art there is there with him. Can this duo work oh, out? No! Oh, he's missed an absolute oh, sitter. Oh, yes! But he is, he's come back. He's come back, but here's Keiserato. Oh! but he's destroyed the defense around Arch. And Vinny and Yuri are in trouble here. They're in so much trouble. Time is not on their side. Gambit have got 40 seconds to clean this bomb side up. The bomb's been dropped, though. Hold on a second. They've got to fall back. Drops it on the B bomb side. Going down Banana is uh, there is a stalemate for the time being, but the pressure starts to rise on Gambit. Nafani getting tagged like a piece of meat in a supermarket, but he's alive for now. Three on three. The flank is on the way. 20 seconds. They're stuck in this choke point. Two on the short position. Down goes the bomb. Down goes Nafani. Hobbit's alone now. Again, he's going to clutch it. 1v2. 10 seconds. Short by the They are looking so crazy in these moments. Like the, when it gets extremely intense, they're, they're rising to the moment. That is a huge, huge round to win. They got the OT. They've reset everything. They have to have all the momentum right now. Gambit have to be feeling like they should have just closed this one down already. They were not supposed to win that. Gambit hesitated. They got stuck in the short position. The bomb got dropped top mid. And I don't know if they knew what to do. They were stuck there for so long. That clock's ticking. The rotation's coming through, but that's in the past now. Second round of overtime. Furia, maybe they're in the driving seat. Perhaps mentally they are. They never stop pushing, that's for sure. But again, Gambit will try and find a the magic they had earlier on in these apartments. Hobbit and Nafani causing so many issues. But it was on long when Nafani caused problems last time and Hobbit picks up where he left off. A 5v4. How did Furia turn this one around? 
Yeah, this is really interesting because, yeah, Fury have double orbs. That's, that is hard to retake with double orbs here. So, they, I mean, you would like to see them find a play, find something before Gambit take a bomb site. And right now they're sacking towards the A site, but we can see Gambit, they're going towards B right now. They're looking to get that bomb planted and it's only dropped there with the AK-47. Assistance is on the way in the form of Arts. However, there's smokes to isolate Art away from these positions. Art's gonna have to go deep. We know he loves to go through the smoke. He's gonna go all the way here, James. Can he do it again, though? Flashbangs will be coming, surely. There are two flashes in the hands of Gambit. The smokes will come first. That could be a meaty one. Not too shabby, but they've got to find some kills. Gambit on the push now, but they've been slowed down by the Molotov. But still, there's only two players here. Let's not forget the action we've seen from Gambit on the other side of the site. Two players on the B box, on the A box side. While the push comes through towards A, but the bomb's not committing just yet. Down goes um, Anthony. Hold on a second. Hop it with the flank again. Oh! Here's the raffle. What are you doing? Shiro's in no man's land. He's got nowhere to go. They tried again. They tried again with that rotation. So much action, the bomb was at the feet of the B bomb site, trying to make it happen from the apartments again. <laughs> some of the shots Case Rogers missed this match, and some of the shots that he's hit. Unbelievable. It's about when as well though, right? Yeah, absolutely, I mean, since, since, they were, since they were against match point. Gambit match point. have to be nervous now. Oh my god. When yeah. you lose a round in a fashion oh like that, god. a free kill, a sitting duck. Case oh. Serato in the face, baby! 446 damage, roughly. Very close. Oh, and wow. suddenly, Fury have got two from two. The CT side has been their problem. They've got every round so far in overtime. Such an important map here for Fury as well. Overpass. Gambit are undefeated. They are undefeated on Overpass. Fury would have to destroy that amazing achievement in the next map. We'll have to see. But for now, can they pick this one up? Can they close their advantage? Gambit, are they shook from some of these insane plays that we're seeing out of Furia? Or can they make it look better for themselves? Ooh, that's a difficult one. Art now getting the damage in. The confidence here from Furia. Drop finishing. Oh, oh no! Oh, that is just totally gross from Drop through the smoke. If it wasn't bad enough, James, Furia are looking to completely clean sweep this on the season side of overtime. Gambit getting turned into an IKEA table getting drilled on banana by Furia. Five on three to take three from three in this overtime. And he's not ready, he's not finished just yet, Art. But he won't be successful there. And it's going to come down Anthony from A to B. It's going to keep them in this case. Rato, though, keeps the numbers even. And there's a flank on a second. But look how slow Finney's going. Who's going to be ready for what Hobbit? Oh, let me just leave him. Something, James. They needed something. That's a great flank there from Hobbit. But I mean, art. art is a crazy ride. I want to get off. Like they got us. I mean, the highs are super high. The lows, though, sometimes. The fact that he's pushing aggressively with the EDP there. He is something else. Yeah. That's the Thurian crowd we want to see there. Super happy now. Again, a very difficult half, but that could have been three. And I really feel like Gambit have got to be feeling the pressure. It's fair to say that. The CT side was the hard part for Furia. They started off well on their T side. We'll see if they can continue their momentum. This is the pick of Furia, the first map of this series, and they are fighting for it tooth and nail. Yeah, sick entry there from Daphne and Hobbit there with the, with the lurk, with the late lurk to just put it all away. Gambit have given themselves something to work with as we switch sides here in overtime. Overtime's an amazing move. You wouldn't want it any other way. Furia. Vinny there on the apps take. And we saw Gambit in the in regulation. They played very defensively, very passive. And once more, we've got Fury with that banana control. They're missing top mid control, but you've got a setup from Gambit at the moment to deal with that should it happen, which normally it would around that one minute mark at this point. Oh, 
Oops. Excuse me. Again, Gambit in normal time. Played defensively around eight. Weren't concerned of controlling top mid, but you can't take anything for granted on the TC side. There must be a process with which to take top mid, and that takes time. Nobody knows what lies beyond that smoke grenade. But it seems Gambit will look to creep up that short position. They could be in trouble. There's a smoke to isolate fights, and there's time to charge through. Hold on a second, though. They're lining up for inserts. He's found two and the bomb. Surely it's a full rotation. We've got two men in library now for Gambit as they try to hold on. 25 seconds to plant this bomb. Still on the floor for now, and it goes from bad to worse. Five on two, five on one, five on none, and the score is tied. Yeah, sick quad kill from oh, Intos, just walking down that pit position, anchoring it completely without issue. And now 17 to 17, a good start there from Gambit. Can Fury hold their nerve against Gambit? This game is what it feels very difficult for Gambit at the moment. So hard to, to take down Fury. Every time you feel like it's time, it's time for them to go down. They, they just keep getting back up again. Oh, we've got the chef kiss. Hope you wash your hands, buddy. All right, then, 17 apiece. One of these teams needs 19 to take this first map. Otherwise, we head to more overtime. I would not be against it. I would not be against it. Oh, Intos, great stuff there from him. And into the next round we go. And of course, all the toys are brought out here by Furia. We've got AWP back on ours again. Furia, Furia wait patiently whilst that initial utility is expended by Gambit. Gambit pretty comfortable, I think, like you mentioned, so just hold a default setup that's very passive with just two players on A and just happy to leave these guys to hold. Sound cues for the Gambit players on the B site. I know, but what does it mean? Oh, don't want to show too much flesh. Oh, oh I do wonder. Well, there is a minute on the clock. There is a lot of time. Got to be really careful about those jiggles, though. And it seems that uh, Gambit will try to thwart the intentions of Furia with more grenades. So they're throwing junk into this B-bomb site, but will they commit behind it? That is the question. Gambit think maybe they will, and Molotov behind that smoke. Once these smokes have gone, there's no more smokes for Gambit, and there are for Furia. 29 seconds, three players here. One is in CT, they know that much, and the swing starts. Multiple t uh, targets for Keiserato. He knows there are three around this B bomb site now, and they're starting to creep back towards the A bomb site. They don't know the information. They don't know how many uh, where these players are, but they know that there were three on B. Yeah, and Intel's actually went out of the site in a rotation. He's playing library. Can they find him in time? It's a great spray down. Axel from Pit as well is just going to take down absolutely everybody. Gambit with a beautiful defense once again. Furia. They, they de just destroyed all that defender utility on B. Still were unable to get through. Forced to have to rotate and again jammed it. When it comes to these A site holds, they are looking so phenomenal. Some support from far away lands there. Many flags in this arena. Furia again, it's gonna have to be the hard way. Three AKs and two Tech Nines, plenty of utility. And Gambit will or well, maybe they'll go aggressive here. At least they'll have the utility for it. Hobbit. He's probably jumped on Banana more than anybody else in recent history of Inferno. Lucky to get away alive in this situation. See him 15 HP trying to avoid a grenade with some elevation. Now, do Furia just go straight in here? What is their read? It's not often that it happens, but when it does, it can prove quite promising. It looks like they might do. Yeah, they... they... They have to just shove all in on this B side. Just all the bodies going for that CT challenge. They're going to try to take down Shiro. He's taken down too, though. It's looking very difficult indeed here for Fury. They're running out of players, running out of chances. This construction hold is absolutely disgusting. Kate Serato, last player standing. 
It's taken down one. The three more players to go. Has to go beyond the volley.